spirit of working from home, I'm not wearing any pants. You know, should I really include that in the video? <laughs> okay, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, it's been about two months now since I joined Microsoft full time uh, in the finance rotation program. Uh, the purpose of this video is to just kind of give people tips and tricks what to do in the first two months. Some of these are actionable items. Some of these things you can just be conscious about as you work full time and are adjusting and balancing. I split this video up into like three parts and I've given timestamps at the bottom and in the description. The first part is how I'm feeling and how I'm balancing things um, in my first two months. The second part is I'm um, calling it two month tips. The third part is uh, kind of additional resources to help you hit the ground running when you first start at Microsoft or a uh, big tech company in finance as a PM or SWE. Like, let's just get right to it. Uh, how am I feeling? I didn't really rehearse this part. Uh, the next section is I'm calling it two month tips. Tips and actionable items that you can use in your first two months. The first tip is to schedule one-on-ones -on with your team right away. This is to build rapport immediately. You want to show them your face, get some of that face time and build a trust and connection with members on your team. Obviously, as you work with them uh, going forward, you'll learn their intricacies, their nuances, how they work well, how do you manage them working. And I want you to extend these one-on-ones to the second degree of your immediate team. So people who your team members work with. This can be in the form of an introduction, uh, obviously come prepared, you don't want to waste their time. Two or three questions that you can ask them, which will try to engage in conversation. Uh, maybe look at their LinkedIn's uh, in stealth mode and see uh, what they're interested in. Are they volunteering for anything? You know, pick up some. And finally, the last part of this kind of section is to ask your GM of, or the CFO of your organization, um, kind of your boss's boss for maybe 15 minutes to introduce yourself. Obviously, they don't have time for for a lot, they don't have a lot of time on their hands. So 15 minutes, introduce yourself, ask them um, about their early career and maybe some advice. Try to try to make that information stick so that after some time, um, uh, your work gets better and you get quicker at what you do. The second thing is to ask two questions at every meeting. No matter what the meeting is, no matter how important the meeting is, um, always ask one or two questions that'll get a conversation going and engage. You wanna to show to your team that you are number one, smart, and number two, willing to learn consistently um, and at the right time. It shows them that you are not just sitting stagnant. Uh, I think that's really important. I, I didn't do that in the beginning. I thought I was, I was scared to look dumb, so uh, you don't wanna be like that. Right, so, so the purpose of this tip is to, to kind of start with the structure, right? Uh, I wanna thank Jody Glickman, a great on the job, she's awesome. Here's my understanding, here's what I'd like to know. If you structure your question in that way, people will be able to meet that here's my understanding baseline, give you extra tips, tricks, business context, right, for the question that you have. The third tip is obviously you'll be stressed, it's your first two months. You wanna make sure that you find a reset point. Because you're working from home, this can be a little item, something easy to hold, something to easy to remember. Maybe it's something in, in your room um, as you're working from home uh, to look at, something to laugh at. For me, I have this little fat Luffy that I got from Japan. Um, I laugh every time I look at it. So it's just a constant reminder that um, take it simple, take it easy and uh, roll with the punches. Um, you're, you're, you're only two months in, so you're still learning and you're still doing your best to be accurate. The fourth thing is to read old material. This can be past documents or decks that your team has produced. The purpose here is to get you really started on the understanding of what that business context is and why does the process happen in this specific logical order, right? That'll help you inform on the ways that process is working. It'll help you understand how to creatively adapt or change that process to be efficient, right? So now I'm talking about impact projects. Um, things that can help you boost your repertoire and significance on the team. You wanna become a critical member of your team. The fifth thing is to start looking for a mentor. This is a great one because uh, I felt I had really great mentors um, and, I, and I do. What I'm getting at here is that there are different types of mentors for different parts of your career. One can be a peer mentor. Maybe you don't wanna ping them all the time, but it could be an aspirational mentor, someone who reminds you that there's always a next step. So you need to identify which type of mentor you're missing in your life um, and for your career and search within the organization. And then the last thing for this point is there's gotta be someone to constantly ask you this question, maybe once in a while, not all the time, but uh, are you being true to yourself? Um, is this the work that you really wanna do? Uh, 
uh, have you identified what work uh, don't you want to do, um, right? So having that no list sometimes is even more important than having that yes list. Uh, the sixth one is something that maybe I may have mentioned before in the video. Do whatever it takes to be accurate. Put all the effort and all the time in to get the number right, or to get the code right, or to make mistakes along the way, right? If you're moving in the right direction, uh, you make mistakes, you fix them, but you eventually get the number right, that's great. That's, that's better than the number really, really quickly within the hour or within two hours, but getting it extremely wrong. Every little process that you do affects the company as a whole. The next tip is to promote your own interests when asking for help. The other day, I had just, just a quick story. I had an issue with Power BI. I was trying to um, merge two queries on top of uh, into one uh, kind of clustered calculated column. So while I was asking for help, I also mentioned, hey, is there a way to do this automatically? So the person I was asking was like, oh my gosh, I, uh, I know uh, XYZ who's doing something similar. I can introduce you to that person, right? So what, is, what, what this is doing is two things, right? The first one is it can help increase your brand value. Here are my interests and the people who know what your interests are can, number two, develop relationships with those people and help you later on down the line, right? So maybe two years, three years, five years down the line, this person has a job opening. This person is working working on a kind of an ad hoc project. They were like, oh, this person back then, right? Shrikar was interested in this. Maybe he has some insight or he can help us with this project or maybe I can bring him on board. So here's the last section of the video. It's, uh, I'm gonna call it additional resources. Hopefully there's a title up there. Kind of a few things to help you hit the ground running. Like the first one is Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss. It's a collection of interviews and kind of tips and tricks by all the successful people that you could probably think of and more. Um, Naval Ravikanth is in there. Casey Neistat is in there. All sorts of venture capitalists, YouTubers, musicians, tennis players, Maria Sharapova, Peter Thiel, just everyone who has made an impact in this world uh, in some way or the other. The next book is called Mindset by Carol Dweck. This book will really help you think about how you should approach the problem at hand, how to make better decisions, how to figure out which decision or which path can take you to your end goal. Reading it once won't magically give you the insight you need but uh, it'll get you to that next step to help you figure out how is that project helping me within the biggest scope of my career? What is that eagle eyes view? Is it giving me uh, the skill set and the mindset that I need? The third thing is a kind of a video, uh, the link's in the description below. It's called Momentum by Simon Sinek. Finally, the last thing is if you work for a tech company, you should probably know what the cloud is. If you don't, here's a little here's a little link that'll help you specifically for Microsoft Azure. It's called Azure Fundamentals. It'll help you prepare you for the AZ900 Fundamentals exam. Obviously, you don't need to take that exam, but knowing what uh, compute and networking is, for example, is really useful when talking to engineers or EG groups. If you're a business student, um, for example, questions like, what is a fabric controller? I hope this video was helpful. These are some things I wish I knew going into my first rotation and things I will do consistently in my next rotation. It'll help me adapt to what the role responsibilities are and make sure that I am killing it going forward.